and we're visiting these whales out here at the end of spring. And spring is a very dynamic season here in the Gulf of Maine. Coming up. Can come into the surface right at 11. Fin. And that's one of the ways researchers can actually figure one fin back in front of another. We also use patterning on the sides of the particularly the right hand side. The swirls somewhat marking the location of these fin back waves. We don't have to worry about the dolphin. The captain does not. Back whales, get out of my way, dolphin. Our captain doesn't have to worry about a collision with the dolphins at all. They have a, a way of seeing their watery world that the finbacks don't. The melon up in the head of these dolphins is responsible for sending out sound waves and bouncing them off objects in the water. The return signal is then imaged into whatever that object was, be it a fish, a whale, a boat. It's called echolocation, and it's really quite brilliant. Nice leap. That's why we consider this group of dolphins to be part of a group we call the leapers, the jumpers. So an example of how well these dolphins can dial in this ability, I can illustrate by saying this. If I were to jump in the water with these Atlantic white-sided dolphins, which by the way would be uh, illegal here at the sanctuary and something I wouldn't do anyway, these dolphins could use one frequency of sound and tell you how many layers of clothing I was wearing. They could switch frequencies and take a pretty good x-ray of my skeletal structure. By switching frequencies again, they could watch my heartbeat in my chest cavity. And that's what I mean, these animals get a very good study of what's in the water around them and know all the time. Baleen whales don't have a melon, so they can't do the same thing. And that's why we're always very careful moving around baleen whales. these two whales in close proximity. A tail lob or a lob tail. That concussion can be heard for quite a long ways underwater. We're getting a great study of this animal as it's engaging in these amusing behaviors. When this whale comes up, see if you can't spot some bumps up around its head and mouth. I lost my balance. Those bumps are hair follicles. See them? Each are about the size of a grapefruit or a cantaloupe, and they have a short, coarse, stiff hair that sticks out of it. Now, most whales lose the hair on their bodies in utero, but humpback whales are one species that retains some hairs up around the head, mouth down onto the flippers. The short, coarse, stiff hairs, we think acting something like a cat's whiskers, helping the animal sense its way around its watery environment. Now laying on its back. I think it's horny. In very short order, this this young humpback whale, or small humpback whale, I'm not sure if it's young, is showing you just about everything 
kind of humpback whale can and will do. Jump, 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 flash, flash, flash. Again, why? We don't know. Might be communicating with other whales in the area. Might have an itchy tail. About the only time that we can be pretty certain of the reason for a behavior is if it's a calf mimicking, it, mimicking its mother. And that's called play. And play is how young mammals learn about their body's abilities and limitations. They'll take those moments of play and later in life hone them in to skills they'll need for hunting and survival later down the road. Just gorgeous looks at the entire animal here. Or sandlands. Oh, wiggly, squiggly little fish that these whales will eat to the tune of one to two tons of food a day. There's a whale we know. A very happy whale. Come on, uncork one for him, don't let him hear you. Let's hear it. Not good, not bad. He's a big whale. So the baby and mom will often rest at the same time. The baby always relying on mom. Look at this one right below you. Look down. Yeah, right down there. It's a whale. Ready, blew some bubbles to start. Now this individual is using the tail to create a concussion to startle the fish, to pack them in tightly, and it's gonna go down and blow more bubbles. Confusing, maybe stunning the fish, and hopefully we'll see this animal come up having completed its feed. Humpback whales from all 14 populations all over the globe are known for their use of bubbles. Only our humpback whales here in the Gulf of Maine are known to use their tail in conjunction while feeding. We call it kicking. And it's a phenomena that only began in the late 70s, early 80s. And probably it started on a day like this, another whale kicking at 11. About the little fish these whales are feeding on is they don't want to be eaten by whales or seabirds. And if they get the chance, they're going to move. So not every effort is successful for these animals by any means. Watch for a tail shot from this end of the up out at four o'clock. Not this time, the next. These young gulls didn't realize there's no free parking on Cape Cod. More bubbles behind where these two individuals finished up feeding. Ooh, some chopping. 
And right there at 2 o'clock, get a look at proof that these whales are eating because in nature there are inputs and outputs. And that right there at 3 o'clock is whale output. This animal here at 11 is straining. We're coming right in here. Some of you asked how close do the whales get to the boat? Well, if they get...